entire career doing real estate M&A, and there's a lot of difficulties in just doing public to public M&A. Um, like, how are the discussions in terms that you're having with corporates that want to go global, be it through M&A or be it through joint venture, um, and some of the considerations that, that you're talking about with those companies? Well, I think that they're, they're really two totally separate types of transactions. You know, we've seen very, very, very little uh, cross-border M&A for a number of reasons, and Marty articulated probably the most important one is that I'm not sure investors really want to see unless there's some real strategic reason to do it. Um, you know, in in cross-border deals, you've got different takeover laws, you've got different tax issues, you've got ownership limits. Um, you know, doing a U.S. style M&A deal, you know, uh, the, the CEOs understand what they're getting into. When you try and go do this in different, ju dis different jurisdictions, it becomes incredibly difficult. Um, now, we do see plenty of cross-border M&A in other industries, and I think you see them in other industries for, for two very particular reasons. One, they're strategic, um, and they can be strategic, and, and the question is, is it really strategic for a shopping center company to go buy more shopping centers in Europe or Germany? You know, investors believe that to be strategic. And the second reason why corporates do it is because there's huge G&A savings, which you really don't see in the real estate world. Um, so I, I think there's going to be very little cross-border M&A. You have Prologis, you've got Simon, you've got Brookfield who have done it, uh, and they may continue to do it, but I think there won't be many other large, you know, uh, public-style U.S. real estate companies doing large cross-border deals. Um, with, with regards to joint ventures, um, you know, I would think that's probably something you'll see a lot more of, um, particularly where you've got co companies who have very specific types of um, asset class. So if you take, um, you know, for example, you know, data storage centers, you'll see those companies maybe take their expertise and do that overseas. You can see what Joel's company does and take that overseas. So I think when you look at particular industries, you'll see it. Um, but really for those companies who've got a very um, specific expertise that you may not see in other parts of the world. Um, but otherwise, I think with regards to, you know, large cross-border deals, not only difficult, but I just don't think we'll see many of them going, going forward.